Eternal Shenron! By your name, I summon you forth! Oh! Thank you! <laughs>Hello and welcome to another Prime 1 Studios review. Today we have the Goku DX version. I'm not getting into the detail of all these long ass names. We're done with that shit. Obviously Goku's from Dragon Ball Z. I love the anime. I love the manga. I love the game sometimes. Hell, I even love the parody version. The Dragon Ball Z abridged from Team 4 Star. Love you guys. Okay, we need to stop rambling. We need to actually get into the shit. So, let's go. Before we get started with the review, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. If you're looking for the unboxing and assembly of this statue, I've posted the links in the description. Okay, so this is the DX version of the statue, so as normal I will start with the standard switch out parts, then we'll move on to the DX parts. Right, we all know who Goku is, and here we have him in his incredible Super Saiyan 1 form. The same form we see him use toward the end of the battle with Frieza on Namek, and Prime 1 have recreated this look absolutely perfectly. The stoic expression on his face is spot on, and I love the way they've used darker skin tone lines to really give it that anime look throughout the entire piece. They've used a sort of golden yellow paint to really give off that vibrant look to the hair which has come out fantastic, and the pale green eyes as well just look brilliant. They even got little splits at the ends of his eyebrows, now that's attention to detail. And the paint they've used on the skin tone is perfect. I was a little worried about the skin tone colour because of pictures that I'd seen shared online from other collectors, but in person it's absolutely great and it really is all about lighting. Now moving down to his neck we have more of that anime line shading and detailing. This really helps to show off Goku's muscles. Nice. And then we have the blue undershirt fabric which has been sculpted pretty well but seems a little flat and doesn't have much in the way of texturing but it definitely has that flowing look in the sculpt so that saves it but the gi the orange gi is absolutely insane the sculpting the texturing the way the shades of orange were used in the shading which is just complemented with that anime like detailing it's absolutely perfect and the back of the gi sports his simple Goku kanji rather than his King Kai or Turtle Hermit symbols. This is the same symbol we see him using when training in the Ultra Gravity Capsule on his way to Namek, and having his own kanji is used to symbolize his transition to training himself and being his own martial arts master. So this is a very nice touch for this version of Goku. The only thing I don't see is the same kanji symbol on the front, which is a bit strange. But I love what they've done with his main body, and look! He's kind of shit in a brick! <laughs> Please don't do it! That was a terrible joke. I'm sorry. But yes, he has two recesses on his back for two small boulders that attach to him. But we'll come back to those. Onto his crazy toned and detailed arms. The same with the neck and the chest, which have the anime detailing and even veins popping all the way up his amazingly sculpted hands that have his Kamehameha Blast being readied. Now I do have an issue with this part as it won't key in the whole way and no matter how much pressure I add it simply won't go in. Might have to message Prime 1 for that one but the power up part itself is beautiful with the clear blue look to it and guess what? This is another fucking LED! I fucking love LEDs! <laughs> nope. Nope. Not dancing this time. Stop it. Let's move on. The white LED lends itself really well to this part with the sort of clear material that they've used for the blues and then into the back of it as well as the front which has more of that shattered look and then the two little rods that key in separately. But I am surprised this part arrived in one piece because these more PVC parts have a tendency to break when they're shipped. This is the first time one hasn't so well done on the packaging there Prime 1. And then onto his boots which also look amazing and has even more of that anime detailing across the dark blue and even the soles of his shoes have been sculpted perfectly. And then we have the rope tied around them which is sculpted and painted really well as well. Now as I said we'd come back to his bum brick. These two parts actually have switch outs that come as part of the DX version. Yep, we're at that stage. Let's get on with the DX version. This is the DX version switch outs. The bricks on his back are still there but they also come with additional blue electricity that surround Goku using more of that PVC like material. And while it's quite fiddly and annoying to piece together, 
it works super well and looks even better with the three extra head sculpts. Yep, there's four head sculpts in total. First we have my personal favourite, the base Goku head sculpt, which has his angry sort of clenched teeth expression and his spiky black hair. I just love the detail of the expression on this head sculpt, a real likeness to the Goku when he's in the heat of battle. My only sort of complaint about this head sculpt is a single fragile hair on the top of his head. It's not really a complaint but my god is that fragile. It's absolutely terrifying when you try to pack it up or even when you switch it out because it, that could snap so easily. But anyway, let's move on to the next head sculpt. Super Saiyan 2! This is the only head sculpt to feature an open mouth and unlike the base Super Saiyan head, the brow is furrowed even further and the hair is raised higher off his face. And if you look closely you can actually see that golden look of the hair has slightly changed and is even more dark golden than the base form, which is a nice little change. Absolutely love this. And the fourth head, Super Saiyan 3. Not my favourite form for Goku in the series, that forehead honestly gives me the fear. But it looks great on this statue with the hair flowing to the back and enveloping the entire back end of the statue. That massive forehead is there and detailed nicely along with Goku's stoic look, quite similar to his Super Saiyan 1 head. I do worry about this head sculpt though, as I feel like it will not fare well over time considering how bulky it is, it may eventually bend, lean, or have other issues. In all honesty, I'll probably just stick with jumping between the Super Saiyan 2 and his base form, because these are my favourite head sculpts out of the lot. Something that was quite a nice little added thing was the rubber caps that Prime 1 used in the packaging for this part. Kinda love that. Smart thinking. And yeah, I left them on because repacking this is going to be a pain in the ass as it is, and I don't really think I'll be displaying this one at all. This is getting repacked because the heads don't have stands to display them. I wish that was more common with extra head sculpts on parts. We want to display all the stuff, damn it. Now for the last part of the body, the way this body keys into the base and is held up honestly terrifies me. Yes, it's got one very large rod to hold it into place, but honestly, I really worry about this statue leaning over time because holding onto Goku alone without any of the attachments or even a head is heavy as hell. And because of the weight and the way it's positioned, I really do worry that it's going to lean or snap entirely over time. I really just hope that Prime 1 thought this through before putting it out because I really don't want to see a repeat of the original Siri statue. God, that thing was a fucking mess. But as I said, the rod is huge and runs from this huge boulder which keys into the base and attaches to Goku's back right foot. So it should be okay and I'm hoping Goku's weight is simply down to them putting metal framework inside Goku himself to stop this issue entirely. Let me know Prime 1, we really appreciate it. The base! Shall we start with the bottom? The top? The bottom? The top? Bottom? This entire base is made up of broken and shattered rock formations that are crumbling under the weight of the battle that Goku is fighting. I love the colouring and the sculpting of these parts though and the way that it flows upwards to the back show how the earth has been shifted beneath him. At the back end on one side we have a rock formation that attaches separately that somewhat resembles a cairn. Now I'm Scottish, so I can really appreciate this. And attached to a few of the rocks is these awesome semi-clear yellow electric parts. We have four of these which are placed either side of Goku and feed nicely into that incredible yellow and orange clear power up part at the back. And as always, MORE LEDs! Attached across all of this is shattered rocks on the inside and on the outside which is a really nice feature, but also leads us to one of my saddest moments. The moment this statue arrived, I noticed something wrong. I was moving it into the game room and I could hear something moving around in the box. Something was definitely loose. So I jumped straight into the unboxing as fast as I could because I really wanted to find out what was broken, what was wrong, and I couldn't find anything until I lifted the base. The goddamn base had a rock that had just fallen completely off and entirely snapped off the side. Thankfully I'm in the process of sorting this with Prime 1's customer service 
and they've been pretty great so far, so I'm sure that'll continue, and this'll get sorted super quickly. Anyway, enough doom and gloom. The rest of the base. Let's go. Once we move down from the rock and power-up section of the base, we have quite possibly one of the coolest ring bases I've ever seen. The entire base is surrounded by the body of Shenron. This is so cool, and in the front center we have a clear 4-star Dragon Ball. I love the color and the way that they've painted the scales on Shenron, with the thicker and thinner parts weaving together, and on the side we have the button for the LEDs and the USB socket for them to function. Another strange thing is that the statue doesn't have an internal battery, so it can't be charged and it has to be always plugged in. So that's not great, but what can you do? But underneath Shenron we have a sort of golden ring and I honestly have no clue what this is supposed to represent. Anyone who knows, drop a comment, would be appreciated. And then the other part of the base is this white and red portion, which is kind of plain. I don't know why, but it's not a bad thing and it kind of works for this base. So overall, pretty good base. Now onto the extras that come with this statue. Okay, so we get a very nice sleek logo stand to put next to this statue in its display as well as some odd little power-up pieces that I, th I assume are meant to sit next to it, but these are super weird. I wonder who thought this up. By the way, they're a nice clear yellow and orange tip part that sit either side of the statue on padded bottoms. I guess you can choose whether or not to keep them in your display or not, so at least it's an option. Another little additional thing that comes in the box is this. Little baggie with a little rubber foot and some sort of part that's meant to go on one of the spikes. Because they didn't think through the engineering and a part of the blue part scratches his leg. Big brain move. So we're at that point of the review, the size and the pricing. The height of this statue comes to a total of 66 centimeters at its tallest with the Super Saiyan 3 head sculpt. And the width is 48 centimeters and the depth is 43 centimeters. So yes, it's a large piece and definitely a heavy one, so be very careful where you place it. And the pricing? This statue comes in at a total of $1,350 for the DX version and $1,100 for the standard version, not including shipping. But overall, this is another amazing piece to add to the collection and a great start to the anime side of my collection, even though I've already got some anime statues and I've just forgot to cover them. But yeah, next we'll have Vegeta, whenever he gets released, sometime in 22 we hope, and Frieza if he ever sees the light of day at this point. He better have some epic purple LEDs, but don't give him that huge planet cracking power ball, that would take up way too much space. Please don't do it. Don't. But that pretty much wraps up this review. What did you think of this statue? If you have any questions, please drop a comment below. And if you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more statue reviews. But until the next one, thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.